Here is our last example for solving an equation that is quadratic in nature. And yes, I told you there were going to be fractions, and I appreciate those of you who decided to come back anyway. So we know this is quadratic in nature. We can see the telltale signs that it's quadratic. You've got your constant here. You have a crazy variable expression, but you see the same thing over here, but instead of being to the first power like this is, it's got double the power. So this, that makes this guy quadratic in nature and also tells you how you want to make your substitution. You want to let u equal the complicated expression of the fraction x plus 2 over x minus 5. And if we do that, we're not going to take this guy right here and we're going to replace him with u. And we're going to do the same replacement with that guy. He gets replaced with u. So this becomes 6 Instead of fraction, we're going to write u squared, because there's the power, minus 7. Instead of that uh, fraction, we're going to write u plus 2 equals 0. So I hope that you guys can agree that trying to solve something like this should be a lot easier than solving something with a bunch of fractions. You might say, oh, but this doesn't have a lead coefficient of 1. Well, but you can still solve it, right? still factor that. We can try to anyway. So the AC method, let's just check this real quick. The AC method would say do 6 times 2 and we get 12 and find the factors of 12 that can add to 7. And those factors of course are 3 and 4. So that means this guy is going to split up as minus 3u minus for you. And hopefully we're doing everything right so that the factoring by grouping works out and we it does come back to the uh, original polynomial. In this first group, the common factor here is 3u. Factor that out and we have 2u minus 1. In the second group, you lead with a negative and the common factor here is 2. Factoring out that negative 2 gives us a positive 2u and a negative 1. So we can see that 2u minus 1 is the same. So 2u minus 1 times 3u minus 2 equals 0. So right now the most difficult thing that we've had to do is to factor that polynomial. From here, we're going to use that zero factor theorem, which tells me that u is going to equal positive one half, or the other factor tells me that u is equal to positive two thirds. All right, but don't forget what u was the placeholder for. We were using u instead of this guy to make things. Uh, simpler, right? So I'm going to rewrite this. Instead of u, I'm going to say this is x plus 2 over x minus 5, and this is equal to 1 half. So now that we're going back to our original expression in terms of x, I'm going back to writing in terms of black. So how do I solve something like this? Well, uh, a few sections ago we talked about solving rational equations. And we talked about how this is an example of a proportion. In a proportion, the cross products are equal. So the cross product here means 2 times x plus 2 is equal to 1 times x minus 5. And we just solve this, right? So this is 2x plus 4 equals x minus 5. Do your manipulating with the equation subtract x on both sides and then move the constant to the other side so subtract 4 and now we have x equals negative 9 but don't box that just yet we might have some issues because we do in our original equation we do have fractions and so we will have to have that discussion about what are our restricted values, if any, 
and we need to make sure that our solutions don't include a restricted value. Alright, so the other half of this, again, u is the placeholder for x plus 2 over x minus 5. This equals 2 thirds. And again, you have a proportion, so we're going to set the cross products equal. I suggest that you go ahead and write it like this before you multiply. So 3 times x plus 2 equals 2 times x minus 5. And now we can distribute. So 3x plus 6 equals 2x minus 10. Let's subtract 2x to move the variables to the left. That way we can maintain a positive coefficient for that. Move the 6 to the other side. And we have that x is equal to negative 16. But again, we did have the issue of uh, we could have a restricted value. So let's check that real quick. At the very beginning, your denominator is x minus 5. So we know. In this whole process, x cannot equal positive 5. And that's my only restricted value. The restricted value only comes from what makes the denominator equal to 0. So we look at our answers, and we see that neither one of these is 5. So as long as we've done our work correctly, these are our two solutions, just like that. So the big thing here is making sure that we can rewrite our original equation. Using a substitution, we can write this as a quadratic, which then factors. You solve this for u, but then you have to go back and remember what u is representing. u was representing this fraction. And so at this point, you've got two separate equations to solve. They end up being proportions, and you solve them one at a time, and you get your answers.